Have you ever wondered where the concept of political machines in the United States originated? Well, let's take a journey back to the 19th century, a time of rapid urbanization and a flood of new immigrants. Cities were growing at an unprecedented rate, and these new city dwellers, many of them immigrants, needed help navigating their new lives in America. Enter the political machines. Imagine a sprawling network of interconnected individuals, organizations, and politicians, all working together to consolidate power and influence. These political machines were born out of necessity, as the government was ill-equipped to handle the burgeoning urban population. Take New York City as an example. The city was a magnet for immigrants and the political machine known as Tammany Hall saw this as an opportunity. Led by the likes of William M. Tweed, Tammany Hall was more than just a political organization. It was a lifeline for the city's immigrant population. These immigrants, many of them Irish and Italian, were offered jobs, housing, and even legal assistance in exchange for their loyalty at the ballot box. These political machines were not just about politics. They were about community. They were about survival. They were about power. Each machine had its boss, its leader who called the shots. And beneath the boss, there was an intricate hierarchy of ward bosses, precinct captains, and local operatives, all working together to maintain the machine's grip on power. However, it's critical to understand that these political machines were not altruistic entities. They were driven by self-interest and a thirst for power. Their services came at a cost, both to the immigrants they served and to the cities they controlled. And so the genesis of political machines was not a singular event but rather a process, a response to the challenges and opportunities presented by a rapidly urbanizing America. It was a system built on reciprocity and patronage, where loyalty was rewarded and dissent was punished. So, the birth of political machines was deeply rooted in America's urbanization and immigration history. Now that we know where political machines originated, let's delve into the power they wielded. Political machines, like a well-oiled engine, kept the wheels of local politics turning. Their fuel, a bartering system of services for votes. The constituents, often the city's poor and immigrant populations, received aid in the form of jobs, housing, and even food. In return, these grateful citizens pledged their loyalty to the political machine, casting their votes as directed. These machines were not faceless entities, but were often personified by charismatic and powerful figures. Take for example, Boss Tweed of New York's Tammany Hall. A larger-than-life character, Tweed's influence was far-reaching. Under his leadership, Tammany Hall controlled nearly every aspect of New York City's governance, from elections to public works. Then there was Richard Croker, another Tammany Hall boss who continued Tweed's legacy. Croker was adept at navigating the intricate web of politics, leveraging his influence to control key appointments and dictate policymaking. His reign saw the consolidation of Tammany Hall's power, making it a formidable force in New York politics. These bosses with their political machines held the reins of power tightly. They manipulated election outcomes essentially choosing who would hold public office. The influence they wielded extended to policymaking. Laws and policies were often crafted to serve the interests of the political machine, rather than the public. This influence was not confined to local politics. It rippled outwards, affecting state and even national politics. However, this power was not unchecked. There were those who dared to challenge the authority of the political machines, leading to some of the most heated political battles in American history. But that's a story for another time. Through their power and influence, these political machines left an indelible mark on the political landscape. The echoes of their reign can still be felt today, as we continue to grapple with the balance of power in our democratic institutions. Despite their power and influence, political machines were not without their critics and eventually faced their downfall. With their stronghold on power, political machines were often embroiled in corruption scandals. These scandals were the result of a system that prioritized power over principles. Political bosses, intoxicated by unchecked power, often succumbed to bribery, graft, and various forms of corruption. This led to a widespread erosion of public trust in these machines, setting the stage for their eventual downfall. In the heart of the Gilded Age, a period marked by economic growth but also by stark social inequalities, political machines became synonymous with corruption. Scandals such as the Tweed Ring in New York City, where Boss Tweed and his associates embezzled an estimated $200 million from the city's coffers, were not uncommon. These scandals did more than just line the pockets of the corrupt, they undermined the very fabric of democratic governance. As public discontent grew, so did the demand for reform. Enter the progressive era, 
a period of widespread social activism and political reform in the United States that spanned the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The progressives aimed to purge politics of corruption and restore integrity to the system. Their reform movements targeted political machines, advocating for measures such as secret ballots, direct primaries, and civil service reform to curtail the power of political bosses. These reforms, coupled with the relentless pressure of public opinion, led to the gradual dismantling of many political machines. While some managed to adapt and survive, others crumbled under the weight of their own corruption. The downfall of these political machines was a pivotal moment in American history, marking a shift from politics dominated by a select few to a more inclusive and equitable system. The downfall of political machines was as dramatic as their rise marked by scandals and sweeping reforms. While the classic era of political machines has long passed, their legacy lives on. Fast forward to the present day and you'll find echoes of these powerful entities in the form of lobbying groups and political action committees, often referred to as PACs. These modern-day political machines, just like their historical counterparts, are entities that seek to influence politics and policymaking. They're no longer the Tammany Halls of the past, but their purpose remains the same, to sway political outcomes. In essence, lobbying groups are organized collectives that use various forms of advocacy to influence public opinion and policy. They're the power brokers of the modern political world, using their influence to shape legislation in favor of their interests. These groups range from corporations and unions to interest groups and associations, all seeking to leave their imprint on the political landscape. On the other hand, political action committees serve a slightly different role in the political machine. While they too aim to influence politics, their primary function is to raise and spend money to elect and defeat candidates. Through immense fundraising efforts, they're able to support candidates who align with their political objectives and ideologies. Just like the political machines of the old days, these modern entities are not without controversy. They've been criticized for contributing to a system where money equals power and where the voices of the few can drown out the many. But it's important to note that not all lobbying groups and PACs are created equal. Some champion causes that are in the public interest serving as a vital voice for issues that may otherwise go unheard. They can play a crucial role in our democracy, ensuring a diverse range of interests are represented. In many ways these modern political machines are a reflection of our evolving political system. They embody the complexities and challenges of balancing power, influence, and the democratic process in the 21st century. Just as with their historical counterparts, these modern political machines continue to shape America's political landscape. We've journeyed through the rise, reign, and fall of political machines in the United States and seen their evolution into modern entities. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. We began our exploration at the genesis of political machines, born out of the social complexities of the 19th century. These organizations, often tied to a political party, were designed to win elections and maintain power. They operated like well-oiled machines, hence the name, using a complex network of local operatives to secure votes and control urban politics. We then delved into the power and influence of these political machines. They were not merely election-winning apparatuses. They were also social providers, offering jobs, services, and protection to those who pledged their loyalty. In return, the machines wielded significant influence over local and sometimes even national politics. They could swing votes, shape public opinion, and even dictate policy decisions. However, like all powerful entities, political machines had their share of criticisms and eventually faced their downfall. We discussed how corruption, patronage, and a lack of transparency led to widespread public disillusionment. This, coupled with the rise of progressive reforms, marked the decline of traditional political machines. Yet, the story doesn't end there. We also examined the modern context of political machines. While the old-style machines may have faded into the annals of history, their spirit lives on in various political structures and practices today. The use of patronage, the mobilization of certain voting blocs, and the control over local politics, these are all echoes of the political machines of yesteryear. In essence, the journey of political machines is a fascinating study of power, influence, and the dynamics of American politics. Understanding the history and evolution of political machines provides us with a unique lens to view and interpret the complexities of American politics. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.